This is a help video for the DC Operational Amplifiers Game and Circuit Tutor, Level 1, Problem Type 3. So we'll go ahead and enter that game. And of course, as always, we recommend that you watch the, uh, or do the introductory tutorial um, available on the website. And furthermore, um, it's a good idea to look at the examples here prior to working uh, the game, as that will help you a great deal in learning how to work these problems. So I'm going to go ahead and go straight into a game now. Okay, so here's our circuit and we have some instructions that tell us generally what to do, um, which is always accessible uh, from the help button here. And we see that we have an operational amplifier pointing to the right here. Um, so two inputs and an output, again that triangular shape. And notice that um, this is an interesting configuration where it has feedback directly from the output back to the negative input. That's what's called a, a unity gain amplifier. And the input is being applied to the positive voltage. So remember that an operational amplifier internally, um, it basically has a large, in fact, virtually infinite uh, impedance between the two input terminals, so they're essentially open circuits, um, but then that voltage difference controls a voltage control voltage source inside the op amp um, whose output is connected to the output here, and the other end basically being referenced to ground via the uh, positive and negative power supplies on the op amp, which are not shown here. So this is a, a very simple circuit. Um, and I'm going to go through a formal solution of this, although we could really um, determine the value by inspection here, as I'll discuss later. So first of all, we have a voltage source, and again, we're going to do nodal analysis, as is usually the case with op-amp circuits, because mesh analysis is generally not practical. It may be actually a non-planar circuit, and some of the circuitry is hidden inside the op-amp, so we really can't do a mesh analysis here. So I'm going to do nodal analysis. The ground is already pre-selected because the ground here is also the ground connection to the op amp, and we'd be changing the circuit basically if we just selected a different node as the reference node. So in this case we don't select that, but instead we're just going to enter equations. So first we'll select a voltage constraint equation as in any DC nodal analysis, um, because we have a voltage source that requires a voltage constraint equation, which is going to constrain the voltage of really the difference between the uh, nodes connected to it, which is the ground node and node 2. So we have 0 minus V2 is going to be equal to the value of that source, 1 volt. So an easier way of writing that is just to say that V2 itself is equal to a fixed voltage. So we'll write, put in the subscript there, uh, V2. And then that value is going to be just a negative 1 volts because of the way it's connected, and also just because 0 minus V2 equals uh, 1, and that's equivalent to writing it this way. So we'll go ahead and check that equation. That is correct. And now, again, the special type of equation we have for op amps is that due to this negative feedback, um, it keeps the, as long as we're not in saturation, which is uh, means we just don't have too large of an input voltage here, um, it means that the voltage difference between these two input terminals is held at almost zero because of the extremely large gain uh, inside the op amp. And because of the feedback mechanism that basically forces these two things to have the same voltage even though they're not actually connected. So we can think of it as sort of a virtual short but a very unusual one in that it doesn't carry any current. So we need to therefore write what's called an op amp input constraint equation which is unique to op amp circuits. And that basically says that the V plus minus V minus is zero. Um, and so those are two different node voltages, so I could write it using this term, or I could maybe just use this one twice and say uh, another way of writing it would be to write it with two separate terms, which is really equivalent to using this term equals zero. But let's say that we take V2 equal to V1, which is the same as writing that V2 minus V1 is zero, or for that matter, V1 minus V2 is zero. We can write it however we want. So we'll check that, and that is correct. And then um, we don't need to do any KCL equations. In fact, we cannot write any KCL equations in this case, um, simply because um, this node is connected 
to a voltage source whose current we do not know a priori. In fact, that's one of our uh, SOT variables. And uh, furthermore, um, this node is, the red node here is connected to the output of the op amp. And remember that because that's connected to the output of a voltage control voltage source internally in the op amp, that means we also don't know the current uh, coming through the op amp. And so there is current coming out of the op amp or going in and we don't know what it is. So we therefore cannot write a KCL equation for this node. So there are no KCL equations to be written in this case, but we do need SOT variable equations. So for example, we need I naught. So I naught basically, um, we really could just kind of get that by inspection. I'll show you here. Uh, SOT branch current, so I naught equals, and then you say, well, there's no resistors even involved. How would we use these terms? Well, the answer is that because there's no current going in or out of the positive terminal here, therefore, this has to be zero. There's just no way it can be anything else because of the properties of an op amp when it's provided with proper uh, negative feedback. So that's just going to be zero. And we'll check that. And that is correct. So it was really a sort of a trivial question just designed to emphasize um, that there is no current in to or out of the inputs of an op amp, only um, through the output. And then for the uh, the other output is the output variable here, V10. So that's going to be considered a non-branch voltage. It's the difference in two, two node voltages between V1 and V0. So that's a SOT non-branch voltage, therefore. And this is always very simple to write. It's just V1 minus 0. So that's just really V1. So we check that, and that is correct. So as you can see, the equations are very simple for this particular circuit. In fact, we could have really um, answered all the questions uh, by inspection. So this is actually um, a voltage follower or unit of gain amplifier, which means the output voltage is gonna be the same as the input. But you know, you can enter that value. Um, I could have just put in a numerical value for V10, and then I could have put in a numerical value for that current, then we wouldn't have to write any other equations. But since I chose it to do this way, we'll just complete it and we'll say no more equations. And um, now it's just going to ask us to, uh, because it's a trivial set of equations, it's just going to ask us for the values. So we know I, I not is zero, it's already filled in for us, we can't even change that. V10 is just V1 and V1 is the same as V2, V2 is negative one, so it's just going to be negative one. The input equals the output. That's the whole point of this circuit really. Um, even though you can draw it in different ways, but it's it's always the same thing. So we'll check that. And as I said, we could have just done that in the very beginning. And that will generate the PDF transcript of this problem, um, if you do want to review that. And again, a detailed explanation can be had if you uh, don't understand some aspect of it, and it can explain the op amp input constraint equations, the constraint equations, and so forth by clicking these buttons here. For example, it will explain a little bit about op amps and the equivalent circuit model, which again, uh, you should have probably read about that in the introductory tutorial, but if you need to brush up, it's available right here uh, conveniently. Okay, and again, we certainly wouldn't need Gaussian elimination here. So that completes this problem, and you can review the transcripts with this button.